am i visible and audible yes ma'am you are very clear and visible also clearly all right thank you so much for uh, waiting uh, i was in the middle of no something worries. and couldn't attend yeah <laughs> no worries ma'am uh, we are thankful that you took some time out to give us a lecture not le lecture but you participated in our contribution towards adr my pleasure so <laughs> So, ma'am, not taking much of your time, may we proceed with the question answer round, please? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, ma'am, first, if you would like to introduce yourself. Okay. So, I'm currently uh, practicing uh, in uh, MP High Court and um, at the indoor bench, and I'm dealing with the uh, civil, commercial matters, also criminal matters. And uh, I keep on uh, contributing to the ADR uh, competitions as in judging them or imparting the sessions, mediation trainings, uh, podcast, etc. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, ma'am, uh, proceeding with the questions, uh, I would first like to ask you, what do we understand from the term pharmaceutical disputes? Like when we hear the term pharmaceutical disputes, what can one infer from that? Right. Pharmaceutical disputes means disputes arising in the pharmaceutical industry. Now you'll be better able to understand what are pharmaceutical disputes when you understand the term pharmacy. Okay. Yes. So pharmacy is uh, the industry of medicines. Um, where all the manufacturing, supply, distribution re relating to the medicines and uh, if we say life sciences or uh, relating to biotech, uh, biotechnology uh, happens. Okay, So when we talk about uh, disputes, rising in this uh, in the day-to-day -day dealings, of the functioning of these companies okay for example okay. if um for example if there's a company and uh, it has to have a contract with another uh, another supplier or somebody or a vendor who's going to give some services to this particular company if that services are not duly given or there's some kind of uh, um, default okay or deficiency then this kind of uh, the 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 disputes or conflicts arising out of such kind of transactions can uh, come in, under the uh, pharmaceutical disputes. There are okay. various categories. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, then, ma'am, what are the impact of this disputes in the pharmaceutical industry, and why do prefer uh, why do people prefer arbitration over litigation? Right. So. In fact, of course, oh, there is a dispute. There are disputes in various kinds of industries. Okay, uh, the, these are of commercial nature. In any kind of this industry, if you see, even in uh, you know the industry, if we say about aviation, or if we say some industry like uh, scientific, uh, who is working purely in the scientific nature. So these kinds of uh, uh, industries also there are disputes. And similarly, if we talk about pharmaceutical uh, uh, industry, so there are disputes. So if we uh, talk about the ADR mechanisms, arbitration mechanisms, then uh, they are generally preferred uh, because of the because of the nature of uh, these ADR mechanisms because they promote confidentiality and they promote um, ease and flexibility. Uh, if we okay. if you see the traditional court litigation system, so uh, you know the you don't get that confidentiality. Uh, in a, you know if there is an a, a judgment, there is a judgment which is passed, so it becomes publicly available. Hmm. All the documents are publicly available. Okay, I mean the facts and figures are all revealed, which has a significant impact on the pharmaceutical company who is involved in the process of litigation okay so it uh, impact, impacts the reputation of the company this is the significant impact 
but arbitration is preferred because of these uh, many reasons about the flexibility also you get the benefit of selecting a seat in the arbitration for example uh, the parties want the uh, parties want a seat to be um, for example singapore okay singapore is a very arbitration specific uh, jurisdiction in which uh, you know there's a good mechanism for arbitration you get good uh, enforcing mechanism so generally it is on the parties they can prefer uh, in which they uh, in which jurisdiction they want to enforce their claim okay uh, sometimes what happens okay. that the right so sometimes the losing party uh, has the has the has to enforce I mean, the, there's, a, the, there's a burden on the winning party, not the losing party, because the winning party has to enforce the claim. And it is on the winning party that which jurisdiction the he has to prefer, which will be preferable to enforce the particular claim. Oh. Okay, ma'am. Uh, that's a very good answer. I hope it's clear to everybody, who are, whoever is listening to us. Uh, proceeding with the questions... I would like to ask, pardon. Yeah, uh, I, I would like to ask, what sparked your interest? Um... Yeah, I think there's a lag networking. Uh, yeah, please. I go. guess yes. Uh -huh. So I would like to continue with the questions. So I was curious that what sparked your interest in arbitration in pharmaceutical industries. Uh. To be honest, my um, my father is in pharmaceutical industry, so uh, okay. we he, he keeps bringing uh, in the you know some equipments related to uh, his um, his wall mm -hmm. equipments. So it generally arises curiosity um, in this industry. There are some raw materials, specific raw materials that are imported uh, in India. And, you know, the major importers are China, from China, US. Uh, so we, they, you know, import these raw materials and then there's manufacturing happening in India. And also, we also export some uh, raw materials. So all of this, you know, he also keeps on bringing some contracts because I have seen him dealing with the vendors and, you know, the he has generally the, those contracts so i keep on reading them and uh, uh, i ask about him like i ask from him like, what are the like general disputes that you face or maybe the people in your industry face and uh, he, he told, told me about the major some some labor disputes are also there not only the vendor supply related disputes but also these uh, labor disputes which actually are prevalent in almost all the companies so, mm, right. so this actually sparked the interest and also this is a booming area uh, and this is very arbitration specific you know because if you talk about the enforcement uh, mechanism uh, it is very difficult to enforce a litigation award uh, probably the foreign litigation uh, uh, sorry foreign yeah foreign lit court litigation award if you uh, compare to the arbitration award uh, in our, uh, for enforcing arbitration award we have got the new york convention and there are almost like 157 countries who are the contracting parties to this uh, New York Convention. And New York Convention says that you can enforce award for an arbitration award in these particular countries who are the party to this uh, New York Convention. But this kind of arrangement does not happen uh, in the foreign judgment. I mean, there are some bilateral treaties, but there are some, uh, you know, what we say, Arra reciprocal arrangements between some countries that, uh, that for example, if there are two countries and so they have that in case there's a judgment passed by one country, so it could be enforced in another country in case that the assets of uh, the party is there in other country. Okay, so where the assets mm -hmm. of the company uh, or a person are, there only the arbitration award will be enforced. For example, they've got a claim. Uh, the, the winning party has got a claim. Uh, okay, so in this case, the uh, the person who has won, the company was won, wherever the assets of the other party will be, uh, he has to or the company has to go in that particular jurisdiction to enforce that claim. So it is very easy when it comes to uh, enforcement. That's why also arbitration is uh, 
you know evolving it's there's a there's a beauty mm. in this so all of this is very interesting it's a booming industry now and especially there are international commercial uh, relations which generally does not happen more much in domestic arena it is a very global field so that's how uh, it's booming and it's going uh, getting very interesting indeed ma'am uh, actually many people are not yet aware of pharmaceutical arbitration so it is very interesting how you got lucky uh, how you had a chance to get interacted with pharmaceutical disputes and you had it uh, and you're pursuing arbitration in pharmaceutical disputes um proceeding with the questions if you could please walk focus through the chain process in context of pharmaceutical dispute like what is the process that you follow right sure so what happens in uh, arbitration is just like a normal procedure but the only difference is that it's a international law uh, i mean the international relations are involved uh, the international companies are involved so it, its nature is of uh, you know not 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 of the domestic nature but uh, international nature so uh, what happens these disputes generally arise out of uh, contracts okay the con contractual relations whether it is uh, re relating to a particular uh, service agreement or relating to a procurement of the raw materials or relating to some um, you know some person investing shares uh so sorry, sorry purchasing shares in a particular company so these are various kinds of disputes now uh when there are uh, uh, conflicts relating to or arising out of these kinds of disputes uh they generally these contracts have an arbitration clause which is tiered clause tiered meaning that firstly there will be negotiations and then if negotiations fail there will be a uh, there will be mediation uh if mediation fails there will be arbitration and now in some contracts what happens they generally do negotiation and go to the arbitration so it all depends on the process uh, outlined in the uh, arbitration agreement or a contract uh, pertaining to all these services and uh, transactions so uh, these uh, these arbitration agreements do have a particular seat or seat meaning a particular jurisdiction in which uh, they could challenge the particular uh, Uh, award, for example, if the award is passed, they can challenge, or maybe they can go for interim uh, measures before the court. Uh, and which law will be applicable? All of these determining factors uh, are uh, decided from the seat. Okay, the place where the arbitration award will be uh, there uh, uh, carried out. Okay. So. so how the process takes place the the initial process is that the arbitral tribunal uh, is appointed based on the parties uh, mutual consent so it all depends on what is written in arbitration agreement if it's written that there will be the the party one party will decide one arbitrator second party will decide one arbitrator and both of the both of these arbitrators will decide a third arbitrator which is going to be the presiding arbitrator in the tribunal so the, there is going to be three uh, uh, people in the arbitral tribunal this could be one arrangement the other arrangement could be that uh, they can mutually come to an agreement to decide a one decide one sole arbitrator okay so okay. Uh, all of this uh, so when all of this is finalized that who is going to be the arbitrator uh, then the proceedings start the arbitrator calls for uh, the the parties and uh, this pass first procedural order in which it decides that what are going to be the laws applicable uh, or what is going to be the procedure uh, which is going to be followed in the entire arbitration proceeding and then uh, the par parties are directed that they uh, submit their proceed uh, submit their pleadings for carrying out the proceedings pleadings as in the statement of claim who is going to the uh, going to be the claiming party will present the statement of claim then there is going to be the statement of defense and uh, if the uh, if the claimant party want want to file a count file, want to file a rejoinder then that's also an option okay so this is how proceedings are completed once the uh, once the pleadings are complete they uh arbitrator is going to take the uh, everything on record and this there is also going to be the examination of the witnesses so it will also take place and then the award is going to be passed 
if one party uh, is not okay with the arbitration award um, uh, based on uh, maybe it is contrary to the fundamental policy of uh, uh, that of uh, particularly if we talk about india this is one of the grounds if the award is contrary to the pre pre fundamental policy of india if the contract if your what passed is contrary to the um the uh, I'm, the basic nat principles of natural justice you know all there are these kinds of grounds which are outlined in our arbitration act so it all depends on which law is actually applicable to that uh, entire dispute that law will be fought okay so okay. this is how the award is passed and once the award is passed there is enforcement and where it is going to be enforced it depends on the seat which is selected by the parties mm. in the arbitration or in the particular contract under the dispute resolution oh thank you ma'am uh, proceeding with the questions uh, i would like to ask how do pharmaceutical companies and regulation bodies and consumers interact in the arbitration process uh just as i mentioned a similar way uh, just as there are vendors uh, supply agreements okay so mm -hmm. in this kind of uh, i'll give you this example um there is a vendor who is supplying a particular um uh, equipment in in large number for a particular pharmaceutical company okay and there's this arrangement now uh, who is the consumer here the consumer here uh, who is going to have this is the uh, have uh, have the equipment is the company itself and there are the vendors so how they interact is uh, on the basis of the contract that they have entered right. into there are terms and conditions on which they have to interact uh, there that there, there are the terms and conditions like um on in you know, on which date uh, the they have to provide the uh, equipment or, or is it going to be on the continuous basis and uh, what will be the quality of the material similarly in the uh, raw materials uh, contract if it is for the procurement of the raw materials then what should be the standard of the quality uh, it shouldn't be adulterated uh, it, sh it shouldn't be uh, its quality should be maintained because again it comes to the healthcare sector it's very important so all of these uh, kinds of uh, uh, th th okay this is one example other is if you're directly talking about the consumers who are like common people who are consuming the medicines they do not have any contract specific with the pharmaceutical companies who manufacture it okay so in case they uh, get some kind of uh, negative result or maybe they feel the deficiency of service then they can take the route of consumer uh, protection act okay right so this is i'm talking okay. about i'm talking about uh, indian uh, domestic culture but when there is there are big tra transactions involved in the international commercial nature uh for example there are m and a disputes merger and acquisition disputes there are ip related disputes ip related as in the tr the, the trade secrets are infringed for example uh, there is a company sipla okay we'll take example of sipla it uses a particular formula to manufacture a particular drug mm. or a medicine now if uh, some other person or a company has uh revealed that process or that uh, formula uh i mean uh, ha has used that uh, process and uh, taken advantage of it and used for own per uh, personal benefit or got some benefit without authorization or without any licensing okay even if you have to use something you have to get some license uh, there's also license agreement and that is not done so that is in under the category of infringement okay similarly there are patent infringements if a, a company has got a patent and then there if the other person or some outside uh, company uses that patent for getting the personal benefit out of it so, so these so in international nature you know these kind of claims are more prevalent okay okay uh then uh, next i would like to ask on the flip side what are the potential benefits of choosing arbitration over the over other dispute resolution methods 
See, definitely, uh, as I mentioned, the confidentiality is something that every uh, company wants. Okay, that's why they don't want to go in litigation. But even if you will see, since there is not so much awareness, uh, the parties would choose litigation. But if you really want to protect your uh, company from loss of reputation and you know leaking all the uh, important facts, then you can definitely choose arbitration because that is the move. Secondly is party autonomy and flexibility. So the parties decide themselves uh, how they want to carry out the procedure of arbitration. Okay. Uh, if you go in a court, you do not have any option. Whatever the procedure laid down by the code, uh, for example, the we have civil procedure code. So the civil proceedings will go as per that uh, procedure. Mm -hmm. But arbitrator uh, in case he is appointed, he can discuss with the parties in what manner they want to uh, pro proceed in this particular matter. Okay. So this is okay. flexibility. Also, they can do one more thing. The parties can choose who will be the arbitrator. Okay. Now, uh, mm -hmm. the parties have this uh, right that the ex pharmaceutical expert is appointed as their uh, arbitrator if they are particularly yeah. talking talking about the pharmaceutical uh, dispute so they they have the option of choosing the expert as the arbitrator now if you talk about judges in the traditional courts so they might be aware of the recent trends in uh, pharmacy, pharmacy they might not be aware of and it is for the lawyers to uh, sometimes you know tell the court that what is the recent trend and all of that but you the parties get this liberty in arbitration too choose the experts and they also get get to choose the seat as i mentioned and mm. it is uh, it is easy to enforce a foreign award than a foreign judgment so all of okay. these benefits are there okay uh next i would like to ask if you can please highlight any notable case where arbitration played an important role in resolving the dispute Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, for example, there was a case, uh, uh, Ranbaxi case, okay, so in which uh, the Daichi has, uh, uh, there's a big, this is actually a big matter, Daichi is the, the has, has entered into a share purchase agreement uh, and shareholder agreement with the uh, with Big Brothers, uh, who had the share in Ranbaxi company, and uh, when by virtue of this kind of agreement, Daichi has got the shares of uh, Ranbaxi company, and then da Daichi came to know about that there is there was some uh, fraud done by Big Brothers in selling uh, the shares to Daichi. Okay, fraud as in there is concealment of facts and uh, misrepresentation on the part of big brothers so when the, he daichi came to know about all of these things he had given a claim uh, set out a claim in accordance with the arbitration clause okay in their contract in their agreement so then that arbitration tribunal uh, was uh, initiated uh, initi uh, that instituted and they initiated with the proceedings and then uh, the arbitration tribunal ruled in the favor of Daichi. So then it w went, uh, you know, before the Delhi High Court for enforcement of the arbitral award. And Delhi High Court chose not to interfere in the award. And uh, finally, Delhi High Court settled the entire matter. So it was in the favor okay. of Daichi. So this is one kind of dispute. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, next, I would like to ask, are there any recent changes or trends in this regulatory landscape, please? Recent changes? Uh, see, this industry is re really booming now. And if we see that uh, there was a survey conducted in which uh, the pharmaceutical for pharmaceutical disputes pe uh, people generally preferred uh, litigation it was a uh, data uh, compared to the arbitration but the, the recent trend now is that when the people are going to uh, coming to 
become aware of these kinds of mechanisms and its benefits. Now, people are choosing out. And uh, re uh, recently now, the, the if you see the contracts in such kind of industries, they have dispute resolution clause now. Okay. So, uh, I was going through one contract, as I mentioned that my father, you know, used to bring some, used to bring some contracts and used to deal with those things. So, when I was reading on contract, it has a dispute resolution clause. And there it was written that there will be mutual negotiations and failing that negotiation, there will be arbitration. Uh, but what I feel that still there needs to be some awareness as to how a dispute resolution clause needs to be drafted. You know, the, it lacked some procedures. It was not detailed. The seat was not mentioned. There was a, you know, the, uh, they they had a predetermined uh, seat that it is that the location of the pharmaceutical company where it is would be the seat. But they have to mention everything clearly because in case of dispute, then nobody is going to agree. The parties are not going to come to on the same page. Okay, so I think the the procedure of the arbitration also has to be well written in the uh, clause. And you know, one recent happening in the industry, if you're specifically asking as an industry and not with respect to the arbitration, is that uh, after COVID-19, there has been a change in, uh, you know, procuring the raw materials. If you see China has been our biggest uh, ex uh, exporter of raw material, it's called API. Uh, it, it is the raw material which generally mm -hmm. pharmaceutical companies use to uh, uh, produce their medicines and they and whatever particular uh, medicine they want to create they add all those chemicals as per the medicine they want to create specific medicine they want to create so after covid 19 you know uh, india has come to this uh, point that we are not going to take you know uh, support from china okay so we are going to be self reliant and we are going to boost our uh, industry by our own okay so mm -hmm. uh, all of uh, these are recent changes now uh, by our uh, this standpoint we have started to produce more by ourselves and export uh on uh, export all these raw materials equipments by our own to other countries so there's a boost in economy as well okay and then we and by this result we're also attracting more investments in our uh in our country more people are uh, outside the country are are uh, willing to make relations with india mm. in in this sector so with, uh, with respect to this there are major now contracts and agreements which are uh, executed with india oh, okay uh, uh well uh, after listening to you i believe most of the people might be thinking of switching to arbitration and pharmaceutical disputes as you have mentioned that it is a booming sector and, and it has its profits and its losses so i would like to ask if there are any specific practice or strategy that you would like to recommend to people seeking success or for better result in this journey Um, so in this journey as in can you clarify the question in the journey as in who are uh, try, who will be practicing arbitration in pharmaceutical disputes who will be studying or will be involved in just like you are see first is if you're interested in this industry then definitely you can think about uh, being a, a consultant being a lawyer uh, for example, I say that there is a that in arbitration there are arbitration lawyers. In fact, if you talk about mediation in these cases, there you can become a mediation advocate. Uh, okay, and if you want to become an arbitrator, so if you are an expert in this category, okay, so you can become an arbitrator as well in this uh, area, and parties would be willing to. Uh, recommend you uh, or uh, to to appoint you at the outset as their arbitrator in fact uh, the in mediation also it goes the same way the mediator if you have interest in this industry you can become a mediator and help resolve or settle the dispute but the only thing here is that there are huge claims involved pharmaceutical industry is uh, a million dollar industry so uh, the parties won't trust you like anything. 
if you develop your skills in this industry, if you cater to all the knowledge that is there, and if you implement it, then you can excel in this field as an arbitration lawyer, as an arbitrator, as a, as a mediator or a mediation advocate. And of course, you can also become a consultant. Also, uh, since I mentioned that the disputes arise out of contracts in, these industri in, in this particular industry, so you can also advise on contract drafting. You can draft contracts okay. for these kind of companies. Okay. Um, running out of time, it's sad that we are running out of time. Uh, I would like to uh, end with uh, this last question. What comments or what thoughts or recommendation would you like to leave for our viewers please um, okay so i will only say that um if you if you're really willing to uh, set your foot in arbitration if you're really interested in this uh, alternative dispute resolution field then you should be uh, not only practicing it but also inspire other people to get into this field, seeing the advantages. We are not randomly thinking about, okay, one day we will just, uh, you know, practice it and we'll do it uh, on our own, okay? We we uh, we have good reasons to support this industry uh, because of all the benefits we discussed, you know? And it has good potential, not only uh, internationally, it's, it's going anyway, but in India, also, if you want to make a hub of arbitration in and it and pro and you know invite it into all kind of industries, in all kind of disputes, uh, leave alone the mm. criminal because that's where arbitration mm. doesn't work. But otherwise, in if we want to you know step our foot in this field, we all not only should uh, develop ourselves but help others. Yeah, this is my message. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, it was a very good session with you. It was nice talking to you. And we are grateful that you took some time out to uh, contribute to our uh, initiative to spread arbitration and uh, to spread information about ADR with everybody. And listening to you, I believe most people might be thinking of changing their career perspective now. They must be thinking of getting into ADR, I believe. It was really nice talking to you, ma'am. Hope to work. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Nandini, for having me. Thank you, Rishi, and all of the other people here. It was my pleasure as well. And it's always inspiring for me to contribute a bit towards ADR and its development. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Have a good day. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much.